Good morning. It's that time where we enter the museum's library of ancient manuscripts. Search carefully through the hidden scrolls, blow the dust off a brittle parchment, and enrich our lives with another foray into hymnody in history. At Christmas time, many of us enjoy going out to find a nice, plump tree to bring home, have lights and ornaments and place Christmas gifts around it. But in the early 19th century in England, the plump tree we are hunting for is a person, a well-known Anglican scholar, author, theologian, and preacher. For many years, he was the chaplain at King's College in London, and he was on the Old Testament Revision Committee for a revised version of the King James Bible known as, well, the Revised Version. I'm sorry that last sentence seemed to come directly from the Department of Redundancy Department, because I'm never redundant, never. Uh, anyway, back to our story. This man, his name was Edward Plumptree, and he was very talented, including in poetry. And in May 1865, one month after the end of the Civil War in the United States, he was preparing for the annual choir festival at the cathedral in Peterborough, England. He needed a long processional uh, hymn of celebration to give all the different choirs that were participating time to make it down the aisles. And so he focused on two verses in scripture, Psalm 20, verse 5, which says, We will rejoice in your, sal in your salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. And also Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. And inspired by these two passages, Edward Plumptree came up with 11 verses which begin like this. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. Your glorious banner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks, and sing. And there, Edward was redundant too, but with a much more artistic result, thankfully. And we're going to sing five verses this morning. But we're not done yet. The music for our version of this hymn was composed in 1883 by Arthur Messiter. Messiter was raised in England, but he immigrated to the United States in 1863 in the midst of the Civil War. He served as the organist in Philadelphia, but eventually secured the post at Trinity Church at the corner of Broadway and Wall Street in New York City. Messiter used this hymn as a service commemorating the 50th anniversary of the reign of Queen Victoria in England. And now, Broadway used to be known as Here Street, H-E-E-R-E. -E. And for you National Treasure fans, you'll remember that one of the clues was Here at the Wall, referring to this very spot, the corner of Wall Street and Here Street, or Broadway. Trinity Church is the very church featured in that movie. Although our composer, Arthur Messiter, was not involved in the filming due to his inability to extend his life another century. But his days, as with ours, are numbered by our God according to his good purpose and pleasure. And we can sing and will sing along with Arthur and with Edward Plumptree and probably Queen Victoria and a host of heaven singing, Praise God who reigns on high, the Lord whom we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice, 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 give thanks, and sing. And so with that last bit of poetic redundancy, we bring to a close this panoramic perspective on the poetry portrayed in our provocative presentation known as Hymnody in History. Once again, that's Hymnody in History.